Jones. You're supposed to report to this office at 6 o'clock every night sharp, and I mean sharp. Otherwise, I go to the parole board and you go back to the cooler. Understand? Yeah. You'll have to write me a letter, Lieutenant. I get it. All right. Well, just paste it in your hat. Okay. Oh, Whaley, one more thing. Say, I understand that you're moving in on Georgie Lennox's uh, punch board business. I hear maybe you're his uh, competitor? Competitor? What for competitor? Look, Leo Whaley, as long as you and Georgie Lennox stay alive, you're both mutual insurance policies, one or the other. See, just don't go trying to collect any dividends, that's all. Don't get me wrong, Lieutenant. Deep down inside, I love the boy. Okay? Okay, Whaley. You know, Brady? I don't like it a bit. So he sold you a bill of goods, too, huh? Just like the rest. Every joint up and down the street, they're all buying from Leo Whaley. He's in and I'm out. Why? He gave me a better deal. Are you kidding? The truth is that he came in and he pushed his weight around, right? He pressured you into it. Okay, so I don't want any trouble with Leo. Trouble? All my life he's been turning a knife in my back. Now give me a quarter to sell newspapers. He takes it away. Yeah. I raised uh, pigeons on the roof of my tenement, and he killed them. Ah, now he has to move in on my punch board business. Uh, squeeze me dry. Boy, that fat slob, they ought to let him rot and sing things. Well, if it ain't my old friend Georgie Porgy putting in pie, huh? the world get from Greenpoint. The little man with the great big, big, big mouth. Harry... Let me have a glass of water, please. Water. That's right, I said water. Well, you, you, I've had enough. Look, I've got it right up to here. You're not going to pick up my marbles anymore. I've had enough. Well, you just try and have a little more. Look, I personally am going to analyze your problem for you. Number one, you have a wife at home who will let you talk. Number two, you, you have to make with the mouth all over the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. So don't get athletic with me, Georgie boy. Just sit down, be calm, relax. Otherwise, Pop is going to have to thank you. Well, don't do it, boy. All right, you characters, knock off. Take it easy. <laughs> you know, Harry, they're making book in the neighborhood that one of these days, one of these punks is going to knock the other one off. Well, look, whichever one of you is left, be sure you have a, an alibi. I mean, a real good alibi. Don't worry about it, Lieutenant. I told you before, deep down inside, we love each other, don't we, Georgie? Yeah, I know, Whaley, but look, I'm warning you again. You show up one minute late for your parole, and I'm going to come knocking at your door. And it's for you, Georgie Lennox. If he doesn't show up, I'm going to come looking for you. All right, you two punks, now get out of here. Thanks, Harry. If he wants to, but don't bother me about it. Leo Whaley's breaking my back, and you've got to keep yammering about Steve. 
Why didn't you get out of this awful business? Oh, you're bringing up that again, huh? The same old routine. Georgie, don't argue with me, please. Don't make me cry again. Georgie. I love you, Georgie. You know that. I want you to be happy. You can find something else to do. What? Pushing garbage cans around for 50 bucks a week? I don't care. I want you to get away from that Leo Whaley to forget him. Even you alive, Georgie, has made a sick man out of you. And you can't fight him because he's too strong. Oh. Now you're on his side, huh? He's a big shot. Georgie. I haven't got enough to knock brains with him, huh? Georgie, oh. I didn't say that. There's enough to have to fight him. I have to fight you, too. Georgie, where are you going? Oh. Getting out of here. Six months with you, that's enough. Georgie, no. Oh, you got nothing for me. You're strictly a no-nothing kid. You got no money. Georgie, you don't mean it. Oh, don't I? No, Georgie, you just hate that Leo Whaley so much it makes you hate everybody. Georgie! <laughs> Georgie, you got no manners. No manners at all. No can I come in. No good afternoon. Nothing. No class. You're always on the muscle. Give me the towel. I gotta talk to you. Just keep the voice down. You're not in the candy store in Greenpoint, you know. All right, come on, give the towel. All give right, the you towel. Listen, I'm talking about manners, manners, manners. You don't throw towels at people when you talk about manners. It's a high-class place I got here. Upstairs, I got a, a dancing school. Downstairs, I got a music professor. You hear him? So keep it quiet. Keep it quiet. Listen, you and me, we got to have a showdown. We got to have a show. You want to show me something, so show me. Listen. I can look that punch more business. I made a go. That's right. And don't think that I don't appreciate it. I watched you. I think you did a very good job. You built it up very big. For who? For me. That's for who? And Georgie, look, don't think that I don't appreciate it. Do you know what I did? I sent out today for the biggest lollipop in town to be delivered specifically to you. The biggest lollipop in town for the town's biggest sucker. Leo, I'm warning you. You're warning me. You're warning me. What? What are you going to do to me? You're going to all of a sudden give me the double whammy like in the funnies? Listen, George, as a friend, I advise you. Grow up, huh? Leo, look, I need the dough. You need money, George. Here. Here's a half an dollar. Go down to the corner store, get me a corned beef sandwich, and keep the change. You don't want it? You should starve. That's all. Starve. Georgie, look at the face. If looks could kill, George. Go away, will you? You're bothering me. I've got a million things on my mind, a million things to do. I gotta square away some things with the guys downtown. Then at six o'clock sharp, six o'clock I gotta meet Larkin. Time for the parole, you understand? Georgie, as a friend, don't get any heroic ideas. Know what I mean? Take it, put it back, relax, take it easy. That's a good boy. <coughs> Squeal! All my life I've wanted to hear you squeal! Oh, George, no. I'm not gonna squeal, George. I'm not gonna squeal, George.
second act of Alibi Me, featuring Don Hanmer. <laughs> Georgie, Georgie and Lennox. How are you? Fine, very fine. The usual? Yeah, yeah. Harry, uh, we've been, been friends for a long time now, haven't we? That's right, Georgie, long time. And that's why I feel that I can, well, I can ask you for a, a little favor. Sure, Georgie, anything at all you want. What do you want, money? No, or, no, huh? it's not money. No? Huh? What is it, then? Well, it's, it's just that in case anybody should ask you, I've been sitting right here since 3.30 this afternoon. I never left the place. Yeah? Why? What's the difference? Why? Look, Georgie, you're my pal. And I like you. And I'd do anything in the world for you. But I've got a right to know what I'm getting into. Now, you want me to alibi you? I want to know why. Uh, would uh, Detective Larkin maybe be... Uh, one of the ones who'll be asking? Well, they should ask about him. <laughs> what do you think? Look at Harry, you got to go. Sorry, Harry. Listen, listen I got to do this for you. I've got to. Now, not on your life. Uncle Larkin in the picture. And I thought you were a friend of mine. Oh, I'm not going to buy you. Now, with Larkin. Listen, Georgie, you're my pal, and I like you, and you're a good kid, and I do anything in the world for you. You want money, you'll go out and find money for you. You want the shirt off my back? I'll rip it off for you. Just say the word. But no alibi, Georgie. No alibi. Oh, Harry. Uh, sorry. I got cussing. There's Hello? Hi, Laura. This is Georgie Lennox. Georgie Lennox? Well, how's my old boyfriend? Listen, uh, Laura, the, the, the reason that I, I, I called you up, well, well Johnny and me, we, we're, we're all busted up, and I'd well, like to come over and see you. Something I want to talk to you about. It's real important. Sorry, darling. No can do. Listen, honey, listen, I, I have to see you. You can help me out of a jam. Some other time. Right now, I'm sitting up with a sick friend. <laughs> you look a hundred percent. It's good to see you, kid. Sit down, Josie. I, I, I thought you'd forgotten all about me. Oh, forget an old pal. Are you kidding? I just that I've been so busy, you yeah, know. Yeah, Johnny was telling me. What, what is this? Is Leo Whaley giving you a rough time, huh? Yeah. Listen, uh... How you doing? <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Uh, I bet you look sicker than me. <laughs> Listen, uh, is it okay to smoke? Sure, go ahead, light up. Oh, uh, you want one? Uh-uh. Doctor's orders, you. Oh. <laughs> Listen, uh, how, how, how are you anyway? How you been? Not bad. Not, not bad at all. You, you know, you know, this is, you know how it is with what I got, you know. Worst part of it's lying here day after day. You know me, I'm, 
I'm a, I'm a kind of guy likes a little action. For sure. <laughs> Doc said it's a miracle I'm still alive. <laughs> oh, what's this yapping about me? How's things with you, kid? Well, look at it. I'm leveling with you. Yeah. Listen, I came up the, for the stairs. Yeah. Didn't want to see nobody. Nobody to see me coming in, you know? Nobody in a spot, kid, huh? Look at I've got to have a, an alibi for this afternoon. An alibi? You, you, you got it. You, you got it. This is a private room. Nobody comes anywhere near unless I call. There ain't been anybody here all afternoon. Except my nurse to give him my lunch. There won't be anybody here for an hour, yeah? <laughs> we, uh, we've been playing uh, gym all afternoon, okay? Okay, sure. You got any cards? Oh, over there in the drawer. Get them over there. We'll turn it up right, huh? <laughs> sure. Stick around, I told you. I'll, I'll bless you a few. Oh, uh... <laughs> Some other time, isn't it? Geez, thanks a million, Steve. Listen, I'll come back to see you real soon. Yeah. Look, Georgie. Yeah? Look, kid. Don't, don't forget, show your push to the nurse out there. And take the elevator down, ask some dumb questions so the operator will remember you. If you don't do anything at all, gotta do it right, huh, kid? <laughs> Play cards with this. Stevie in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stay away, honey. I couldn't. Oh, Georgie. Oh, honey, I just couldn't stay away. I... Oh, Georgie, I thought you never. Oh, you thought, you thought. Yes, yeah, so did I. Oh, honey, listen. You want to kick me? Go ahead. You want me to? You want to walk all over you? I'll, I'll lay down on my face. Oh, honey, what can I say? Say you love me, George. Oh, I don't have to say it. Forgive me. Oh, Joni, Joni. Listen, listen, let's, let's go out, huh? Let's go out and have dinner. We'll go to a show and, oh, we'll go dancing afterwards. Come on, what do you say, shall we? Huh? Oh, Georgie, it would be wonderful. I can wear that new dress I bought. Sure you can. Listen, uh, Joni, uh, did anybody, uh, come around this afternoon while I was gone? No, not a soul. Well, uh, in case anybody should ask you, it's not that they, uh, would or anything like that, but in case they do, tell them that I've been here all afternoon, huh? All right, George, if you want me to. Stick to it, no matter what. Since half past three. What's the matter, Georgie? What are you talking about? Who are you hiding from? Oh, no one, baby, no Don't one. Don't lie to me, you want an alibi. You don't care about me at all. You just want to use me. Honey, listen. It's true, honey. I, I, I do want an alibi, and you've got to help me. You've got to. You've got to. Listen, that's, that's Larkin. That's Larkin now. Listen, honey, you've got to help me. You've got to help me. Please. Please. What a surprise. Well, what brings you here? An old friend of yours, Georgie. What do you mean? Yeah, Leo Whaley. Somebody just let him have it with a letter opener gadget. Well, what do you know about that? You came here to offer me your shoulder to cry out, huh? That's funny, Georgie. You don't seem very surprised. Listen, I'm not the only guy that hated Leo. Tell you what, you find the guy that did it, 
Let me know who it is, and I'll give a sob up for his defense. Save your money, Georgie. You might need it. You remember I always used to tell you that if one of you two punks got knocked off, that I'd come and look the other one up? Yeah, I remember. All right, Georgie. Suppose you give a little, huh? Where were you this afternoon? Who's nowhere? Is that a fact? It's a fact. I was here all afternoon. All afternoon? Well, since, uh... 3.30 on. You're positive now. Well, I told you, didn't I? Yeah, you told me, Georgie. But I don't believe you. You don't believe me? That's the wife. Johnny? Johnny, honey? Ask, ask Johnny here. She'll tell you that I've been here all afternoon. Go on, honey. What are you waiting for? You've got nothing to hide. Well, Mrs. Lennox? He was here all afternoon. You're sure of that now? I mean, you could absolutely swear to that in a court of law. Yes. Hmm. Well, I guess that's that, huh, Jody? Meaning what? I said meaning what? Meaning I think your alibi stinks, as far as I'm personally concerned. <laughs> Boy, that certainly lets you off the hook, don't it? Boy, that makes you sore, don't it? You'd like to pin the big one on me, wouldn't you? You said it. Well, I'll see you around, Jody. Lennox? Mr. George Lennox? Oh, yeah. Hey. Blue Arrow Delivery Service. Sign here. Who's it from? To Mr. Whaley. Leo Whaley. Oh. Go ahead, open it, Georgie. I'd kind of like to take a look at it. Hey, I got the real whopper in it. Well, what's it to you? Go on, get out of here. What are you waiting for? Uh, you know what the kid's waiting for. Go on, stake him, Georgie. Stake him? What do you think I am, a mint? You stake him. Okay, Chief Kid, okay, keep your lousy tip. I'm here twice this morning and three yeah, times yeah. this afternoon and only the lady's in. I got orders to deliver this personal, but he or he ain't allowed. Hmm? Oh, I almost forgot. There's a note goes with the package. Well, here, give me that, kid. You wait a minute. To the biggest sucker in town. Get your hat, Jody. Adaptation of the famous tale by Edgar Allan Poe, The Purloined Letter. Our star, Arnold Moss. Be sure to listen to Suspense each Monday night on your CBS radio station. CBS Television Network.